Good morning, everybody. Great to see you again on this virtual worship today on Sunday, the 29th of August, 2021. I'd like to invite you all to this worship service this morning. Well, it's nearly three months since we went into this lockdown around in Sydney, and still we are not sure how long exactly this will last. And uh, my mom in Korea phoned me last night to ask how we were doing. She uh, apparently saw some grim news on TV regarding the lockdown stops in Sydney, and she was very concerned. And she is not alone. And I believe we too are worried and concerned. And almost everyone throughout the world appears to be on the same boat because of this COVID-19 pandemic crisis. Nevertheless, I'd like to still invite you all to this worship, leaving all your worries and concerns and even problems behind, because worship is our life as God's children in this world. So let us pray. Lord, our God, we come in the name of God, our Father, our Lord, our Creator. We come because we are confident of your love and grace for us and for the whole world that you have created. Lord, we come because you are our Good Shepherd. We come this morning because you are the source of all true and lasting joy in our life. We worship you for your wisdom, which is beyond understanding. We praise your name because you can meet all our needs. And we sing to you because you restore the brokenhearted and heal the wounded. Lord, please come into our hearts again this morning and clean our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, I'd like to invite you all to spend some moments in your silent prayer and confess the sins that you have committed before God. And please concentrate on, uh, concentrate on God's presence while you pray. So in silence, let us pray. Lord, forgive us, forgive our sins, clean our hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God. May I be like you. Change my heart, O oh God. Change my heart, O oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, O oh God.
Today reading is from Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, 14 and 15, 21 to 23. The teaching of the ancestors. Some Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples were eating their food with hands that were ritually unclean, that is, they had not watched them in the way the Pharisees said people should. For the Pharisees, as well as the rest of the Jews, follow the teaching they received from their ancestors. They do not eat unless they wash their hands in the proper way, nor do they eat anything that comes from the market unless they wash it first. And they follow many other rules which they have received, such as the proper way to wash cups, pots, copper balls, and beds. So the Pharisees and the teachers of the law ask Jesus, Why is it that your disciples do not follow the teaching handed down by our ancestors, but instead eat with ritually unclean hands? Jesus answered them, How right Isaiah was when he prophesied about you. You are hypocrites, just as he wrote. These people, says God, honor me with their words, but their heart is really far away from me. It is no use for them to worship me, because they teach human rules as though they were my laws. You put aside God's command and obey human teaching. The things that make a person unclean. Then Jesus called the crowd to him once more and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing that goes into you from the outside which can make you ritually unclean. Rather, it is what comes out of you that makes you unclean. For from the inside, from your heart, come the evil ideas which lead you to do immoral things, to rob, kill, commit adultery, be greedy, and do all sorts of evil things, deceit, indecency, jealousy, slander, pride, and folly. All these evil things come from inside you and make you unclean. This is the word of the Jesus Christ. A young man once came to a great rabbi and said, Sir, I always go dressed in spotless white like the sages of old. Now I only drink pure water and nothing else. I live a very simple life. Even in the coldest weather, I lie naked in the snow to torment my flesh, to increase the level of my endurance, also, daily, I receive 40 lashes on my bare back to complete my perpetual penance. As the young man spoke, a white horse was led into the yard and to the water trough. It drank, then it uh, rolled in the snow, as horses sometimes do. Just look, cried the rabbi. That animal, too, is dressed in white. It also drinks nothing but water and rolls naked in the snow. So also, uh, rest assured, it gets a really da uh, uh, daily ration of 40 lashes on the rump from its master. Now, I ask you, is it a saint or is it a horse? It's kind of an interesting question. Can outside re rituals make us inside saints? Can outside uh, rules change our heart inside out? A well-known Christian writer and preacher, David Chadwell, once posed interesting questions. Which would you prefer for a next-door neighbor, a person of excellent habits, or a person with a good heart? Which would you prefer for a good friend, a person of excellent habits, or a person with a good heart? I know, it's wonderful to have a neighbor who conscientiously uh, cares for his property while respecting your property. 
It is wonderful to have a friend who always sets a good example of good skills or habits. It is wonderful to be married to a husband or wife who always shows good manners and increasing skills at their works. As wonderful as those situations are, however, none of them compare to having a neighbor, a friend, or husband, or wife, or child with a good heart. The point is, when you discuss good behavior, you are discussing the quality of a person's self-control and discipline. But when you discuss a good heart, you are discussing the inner quality of the person. First, what is self-control? Think about it. What is self-discipline? Self-discipline is essentially your consistent ability to control your thoughts and actions, feelings, and even emotions into better ones, right? For example, when it comes to your finances, it's your ability to stick to your good plans for paying down debt and wise increments of your saving and investing in the long term. To make all these happen, you must have first, above all, good rules, good plans that you need to stick to consistently. So if you do some good research on self-control or self-discipline, you will always come across something like this. Five essential ways to maintain a good relationship between spouses, or seven critical ways to boost career advancements, or even something like this, six important ways to be a millionaire. Even in Buddhist, there are five practices to change your mind. It means that you become a different person, mostly inside, by practicing five, uh, practicing five practical ways on a daily basis. Well, let's get back to one of Dave Chadwell's questions. Which would you prefer for a good friend, a person of excellent habits, or a person with a good heart? Well, for me, I'll, I would like to have a friend who has excellent self-discipline and control and good manners, and at the same time, a good heart. Well, it's easy said than done. I mean, developing good habits by sticking to a few rules to maintain good self-discipline is one thing. And having a good heart is another. I believe the latter is harder, harder than the former to achieve. When we say someone is good-hearted, we normally mean he or she is kind, caring, gentle, a generous person, even when they have a disadvantage because of their good hearts. I think this is the focus of today's scripture reading from Mark's Gospel. Some Pharisees and teachers have come down from Jerusalem, and interestingly, they are gathered around Jesus watching the dis uh, disciples. Not because they were uh, particularly impressed by the disciples, but because they wanted to kind of catch them napping. It seems that the disciples are eating lunch. They have come, uh, come in from the day's work and are very tired and hungry so that they immediately sat down to eat without washing their hands. The Pharisees got them and came up to Jesus and said, Why don't your disciples live according to the rules of the elders and clean their hands before they eat? Did you wash your hands? Well, this was an appropriate question for all parents trying to teach their children good hygiene. Did you wash your hands? At first glance, this is a strange concern for those religious leaders, isn't it? It wasn't like they were afraid that these guys would get their food all germy at all. Not washing our hands is definitely against COVID-19 restrictions these days, but in their world, not washing their hands before eating was not just against their hygiene regulations. In short, the Pharisees 
in today's reading were very upset that the disciples were breaking one of their rules, one of their religious traditions of their elders. In other words, their religion was about the rules which everyone had to follow in order to be acceptable to God. They believed that the law that God gave to Moses was their ultimate guidance and milestone through which they would eventually reach God and finally became God's chosen children. Their laws consist of the written law and the oral law, for example, the teachings of the prophets and the oral traditions of the Jewish people for centuries. And verses 3 and 4 of today's reading say of the importance of keeping the law as Jews, it reads, The Pharisees, as well as the rest of the Jews, follow the teaching they received from their ancestors. They do not eat unless they wash their hands in a proper way, nor do they eat anything that comes from the market unless they wash it first, and they follow many other rules which they have received, such as the proper way to wash cups and pots and bowls and even beds. Keeping the law for Jews at the time is substantially different from keeping the law for us in our times. For us, to keep the law is a way to become law-abiding citizens, but for them, to keep the law was a way to become God's children. Keeping the law and traditions that came from their ancestors was like their religion at the time. The big issue for those Pharisees in today's story was Jesus and his followers didn't keep the rules of their game. Not just in today's reading, but almost in many other gospel readings as well, Jesus didn't keep their law. And they were so frustrated because this first person, Jesus, not just didn't keep their law, but also ignored their religion. So they often called him blasphemy, lawbreaker, and even a friend of sinners and outcasts. As you might know, Buddhism emphasizes their meditation practices. They believe the meditation practices will transform the way you think the way you view the world, and one of the states you must achieve by ongoing, persistent inner meditations is what is called nirvana. Nirvana. Well, I used to be fam familiar with these stops because around 30% of my extended family members and relatives in Korea are still committed Buddhists. Anyway, in order to reach the state of nirvana through serious meditation practices, you have to experience a kind of middle way, a middle way called sunyata, which means in English, emptiness. Sunyata, the emptiness experience, is a complicated concept. But to put it in short, you have to learn a series of skills to block the process of your thinking. It is definitely achievable, and it is also a must stay for all serious Buddhists to experience and achieve to finally reach the state of nirvana. In other words, through those meditation practices, you have to develop the skill to cut off and block all those negative evil thoughts and ideas, even emotions going into your mind. And then, there you are. Your inner mind is as pure as an infant or even as, as a saint that is not affected by greed, hatred, or selfishness, etc. Well, I'm not trying to degrade Buddhism with all this. I mean, it is the same with all our human religions in history. They help their followers 
to be better human beings and spiritual person by encouraging them to follow and keep their particular rules and practices in their religions. And those Pharisees came up to Jesus in today's story and challenged Jesus with a question, Why don't your disciples wash their hands before eating? Why don't your followers keep our commandments that we received from our ancestors? You see, nothing wrong with washing hands before a meal, right? Rather, it is a good thing to do to wash hands before eating. It is a good thing to wash bowls and pots and clothes and bedding in a proper way. The problem with all this for those Pharisees is they believe they can change their heart by keeping laws, regulations, practices, and tradition of their religion. Listen again to Jesus' reply to their challenge. Jesus said, There is nothing that goes into you from the outside which can make you ritually unclean. Rather, it is what comes out of you that makes you unclean. Friends, this is all that we need to hear uh, this morning. Jesus sticks up for his uh, disciples and turns on these Pharisees and teachers and says, Why do you not know that your religion cannot clean your hearts? Friends, rules can change your heart. Traditions can clean your heart. Philosophy or psychology cannot clean your heart. Religions can clean your heart, even you can clean your heart yourself. To clean your heart is totally beyond human capability. There is nothing that, ca that can go into your heart from the outside and clean your heart, changing you inside out, upside down, to the extent of being worthy of being called God's children. That's God's job. That's right. That is God's business. Only someone who is capable of doing it, who is not from this world, can enter your heart to clean and mend it for you. That's why we need Christ in our lives and in this world and the next and forever in our eternal life. The good news is, Jesus our Lord is always waiting outside for you to allow Him to come in. Our Lord Christ is still knocking on your hearts, saying, Here I am, my child. I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with you and you with me. Friends in Christ, open your door to Christ and accept Him into your heart is not just keeping the law or following certain practices. Opening your heart to Christ so He will come in and eat with you and live with you is the only option you need to choose again and again and again repeatedly in your whole life until you breathe your last. Here is knocking again this morning. Here I am, my child. I'm standing at the door and knocking. And if you hear my voice, open the door. I will come in and eat with you and you with me. Let us pray. Let us bow our heads before God in prayer. Lord our God, with so many rules or regulations, laws and traditions that we have in our society and in this world, we appreciate them. We appreciate that they are here to help us to be good, law-abiding citizens with better attitudes and manners in all our relationships. But we know that they can't easily change and clean our hearts so we can deserve to be called your children, 
So now in this prayer this morning, we pray that you come into our heart and cleanse it, mend it, and heal it. So we are your children always. The state of our world convicts us now to cling to you for dear life. The volatile history of our humankind is so scarred. The current problems of this world and the earth continue to increase, Lord. The news of war and conflict and natural disasters and of all these climate collapses and all this COVID-19 story only makes us to turn to you for help. Bless and heal the world, we pray, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus Christ. Make your love comfort to every nation, every community, and every soul. Lord, bring hope to the hopeless and unity. Bring help to the helpless and the broken. Friends, I'd like to encourage you again to have some silence, some moments to pray for your nation, your church, your loved ones, and all those who might need your prayers at the moment. So let us pray in silence. Father, our Lord, listen to our prayers. Listen to our prayer for those who need our prayers. We say these prayers in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us continue to pray in the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. It will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trials and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Friends in Christ, be always conscious of Jesus knocking on the door of your heart. Every time you are confused or in doubt, open your heart, open your heart to Christ. Then He will come in and clean your heart, clean, uh, strengthen and empower it for your days. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and your loved ones this day and tomorrow and always. Amen.